What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. In the previous videos of the series, we took the application we created in our Spring Boot series, wrapped it inside a Docker container and then accessed that web application from a browser running on our local machine. Today we are going to take this one step further by introducing some kind of database to store the videos we are creating inside it. But wait, isn't that what we were previously doing? Well, our previous app relied on an in-memory database making it easier to package everything in one go. But now we are going to make use of an actual DB like Postgres in this example. Now, your first guess might be that nothing is going to differ from a Docker perspective even if we introduce this change, as we can make a single container and inside it run both our Spring Boot application and a Postgres server. Well, while this is possible, if this application ever got popular to any degree, it would start to have some issues. Imagine that you start getting a lot of traffic to the Swagger endpoint, and as you get more traffic, you're going to want to introduce more web application servers to respond to incoming requests. And so, to make additional servers, you might create additional instances of your Docker container that contains both the main application and an instance of Postgres. The issue with this approach is that every one of these different databases will be completely disconnected from one another. And so, one server along with one DB instance inside one given container might think that video with ID number one exists, whereas another instance might think otherwise. So, in general, we would not want to create multiple instances of a DB for a single app. Instead, we would want to have one single instance and then, if we need to scale up the web application itself, we could just scale the server by making additional instances. Therefore, what we're going to do is have separate Docker containers for both the web application and the Postgres server, and each of the Docker containers that holds the main app will connect somehow over to the DB instance in a separate container. Now, for the first iteration of this project, we're not going to worry about scaling just yet. So we're really going to be setting up something that looks like this. We've got one Docker container that contains our app, and then a second container that has the Postgres server inside it. Since Docker is the focus of this video and not Spring Boot, I'm going to go very briefly through the changes needed to migrate from H2 to Postgres. And as a backup, you can find the full code on GitHub as usual. So, the first thing you'd want to do is update your POM file, of course, by adding the needed dependencies you see. The following properties should then be added to the properties or YAML file. Make sure to change the database name, username, and password as you see fit. And finally, to allow Flyway to automatically create our tables, you will need to add this migration SQL file to the resource folder. We will be discussing DB migrations with Flyway and Postgres in an upcoming video, so don't worry about this for now. Okay, now that we've got all that stuff put together, we're going to bring back the Docker file we previously wrote. This file's sole purpose is going to be related to the Spring Boot app. It's solely representing this side of the equation, it has nothing to do with our Postgres server. Now, if we attempt to run this Docker file the same way we did in the previous video, notice how we immediately get an error message. It says Postgres connection to this and that failed. So our application is attempting to start up, but there's no server running to connect to. You see, even if you have a local instance currently running, which I do, this same error will pop up. But why? Why isn't it using the local instance by default? Anyway, as far as getting up a separate Postgres server goes, it's straightforward. We can run the command we've been using, which is docker run Postgres, and that's going to reach out to the Docker Hub, pull down a Postgres instance, and start it up on our local machine. However, after we rerun our image, it looks like we still have the same error message we had before, even though we are now running a Postgres server inside of a separate container. So what's the problem? Our local instance isn't being used, nor is the separate one inside a container. Well, let's think about it for a second. We've got a Spring Boot application in one container, and the Postgres application in another. Now, these two containers do not have any automatic communication between them. They are two isolated processes that don't have any communication. To make sure that our app can kind of reach out to the DB server and store information or work with it, we need to set up networking infrastructure between the two. And when it comes to setting up some networking functionality between two separate containers, we have two options. The first one is making use of the Docker CLI that we've been making use of throughout this series so far. However, the issue with it is that it's just a real pain to do, as it involves rewriting a handful of commands every single time we start our containers. Or the second option we can make use of, Docker Compose. To do that, flip back to the terminal and run docker-compose. You should see some content appear on the screen and list out a series of different options tied to this command for you to run. The best thing I can tell you about Docker Compose is that it exists to keep us from having to write a ton of different repetitive commands with the Docker CLI. 
The other big thing that Docker Compose is going to do is that it's going to make it very easy and straightforward to start up multiple Docker containers at the same time and automatically connect them together and it's all going to happen behind the scenes. Now, to make use of Docker Compose, we're going to take the same commands that we were running before like docker build or docker run, but we're going to encode these commands into a special file in our project directory called docker-compose.yaml. Let's try to write that docker compose file. We will first start by specifying the version of Docker Compose that we're trying to use with this formatted file. We will dive into the specifics of Docker Compose and all the features it has to offer in detail in a future video. For now, we said that we needed two containers. Let's represent that by services, one for the app and another for the DB. Concerning the Spring Boot app, our Docker file is already written and ready to go and is present in the current directory. We also need to add the same port mapping we previously made use of to be able to access our endpoint from Google Chrome. And finally, we need to specify that the DB instance should be started before the server and lay out the environment properties of that DB instance, similarly to what we did inside the application properties file of the Spring Boot application. Concerning the DB container, it will use a base image of Postgres, of course, and the same environment variables we defined up there. A port mapping is not necessary here because we do not need to access the DB from the outside, only internally from the app container. And that's it. But wait, the whole point of using Docker Compose was to connect these two containers. But where did we do that exactly? Well, believe it or not, this file is going to automatically create both of these containers on the same network and they're going to have free access to communicate with each other in any way that they please. So when two containers are created using Docker Compose, we don't have to go through any port declaration. The port mapping we wrote in the file was solely to open container access to our local machine. We don't have to take any additional steps to connect the two separate containers. Now that everything is set up, let's figure out how to make use of Docker Compose using this file. To do that, we're going to run the command docker-compose up. After we run it, the first line we see says network created, confirming that Docker Compose is automatically making a network to join these two containers together. Then we can see that it's displaying the output of the Postgres database container first, followed by the Spring Boot container, which is ready to accept connections and is accessible via Chrome on port 8080, and that's a basic use of Docker Compose. If we run Docker PS or check Docker Desktop, we can see that indeed we have two different containers running under the same network. Stay tuned for the next videos of this series in which we dive deeper into Docker Compose, take our application and files and polish them into a production grade workflow. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.